In this section, we're going to be covering how to use a scripted pipeline in Jenkins to build, test, and otherwise verify and finally publish our Java jar file into a Maven repository. A scripted pipeline in Jenkins is Groovy code. Groovy code that specifically starts with Node and then defines individual stages you see named here for performing the various operations that represent the build. The way this is going to work is that instead of having to go through and take 5 to 10 minutes to use a Jenkins user interface to put together the steps that make up our build, including our location for source control, we're going to define all that with code. This is done by using a series of pre-existing functions, like how to check out from Git, how to use Gradle, how to use credentials, and later on, how to deal with publishing. To figure out how to use these individual commands, there's actually a pipeline syntax generator off of the pipeline syntax link on any job. For example, if we wanted to know how to use git, we would simply have to select git, enter the URL, branch, select the credentials, in our case, our git SSH key, hit generate pipeline script, and it will give us the command needed to do this operation. The specific work has been divided up into stages starting with clone. Because we were getting this code from a remote location, we have to instruct the pipeline how to obtain this code. The next step has us using with Gradle, which is a way of associating the command line environment with an existing Gradle environment. In this case, we're just running what we would run locally. We're running Gradle W clean build with notating any stack traces if there's an error along with informational output. When it comes to publish, we're doing what we also did locally, except this time we're having to use the with credentials binding of username and password to pull our credentials as the GitHub publish maven credential ID, casting the username to MVN username, the password to MVN password, and then passing that in at the command line here to Gradle W publish. Also note that just as before, we were using the build number to be a part of the one dot version. We're also doing this here. Finally, we have a post section of the build, which is used to do the post build actions that were done in the freestyle job. In this case, just saying Jococo is going to publish the Jococo code coverage metrics. JUnit works in a similar manner, also generated via the pipeline syntax generator. We give it the location of our test XML and it will publish the JUnit reports. NextGen warning plugin is a little bit different because it's technology specific. In this case, to do PMD, it's two steps. One, we have to call scan for issues, give it the name of the tool along with the pattern. And then secondly, we have to publish the issues. To create the scripted pipeline, we're gonna go back to the dashboard, select new item, Give it a name. And select pipeline. When it comes to how to set it up, we have the same considerations with polling SEM. Ideally, the whole purpose of continuous integration is to detect when there's a code change and run this job. The preferential method is going to be with webhooks. However, for complexity's sake, for now, we're going to skip that and just initiate this job manually. While we have the option to define the pipeline script inline, I highly recommend not doing this. The configuration is code and therefore should live with a code base. As such, we're going to pull the pipeline code from SEM. In this case, git from our example repository using our credentials for SSH using the main branch, noting that we're looking for the script file that we created earlier called Jenkins file sitting in the root of the repository. Once it's saved, we can hit build now to cause it to be initiated. Clicking on the bar will let us see the output as it happens. It's work, so now we're gonna verify that. If we look at the main job page, we will also see each individual stage listed under the stage view. In terms of runtime, this can be an easier way to watch a job go through these stages as it happens. Additionally, we see coverage trend 
PMD warnings along with our code coverage output just like on the freestyle job. We can open up code coverage and see similar output to what happened with freestyle. Additionally, there is an easier way to use this using what is known as the Blue Ocean plugin. If you don't already have the Blue Ocean plugin installed, if you go to Manage Jenkins, Manage Plugins, you can see that there is a Blue Ocean plugin. The advantage of installing this plugin is it gives a pipeline specific view into how all this stuff is happening. This becomes more important as pipelines become more complicated or have more stages. You can get to this view at any time from the dashboard by just saying open blue ocean. Then within here you can select job and see a pipeline based representation of its runtime where you can click on each individual stage and look at the console output this way. Additionally, we can verify that our jar file was uploaded by going to our repository, looking for packages, and then showing that we had a version that was uploaded in our case, 1.1, where 1 came from the build number for our Jenkins pipeline.